In a special discussion on the sacking of former governor Kamla Beniwa. Mr. Rudy, let me put to you what in a sense was the tentative conclusion we reached at the end of part one. That the government may well have a strong case for the sacking of Kamla Beniwal. The fact that the president signed on it without asking for reconsideration perhaps suggests that it is a good case. You heard Mr. Ramachandran make precisely that point at the end of part one. But people also feel that the government has been capricious and whimsical in the handling of the matter, graceless in the way it's done it. In other words, you had a good case but you haven't handled it properly. Well, uh, Karan, you have, uh, thank you for correcting me on that, uh, the issue of calling a lady governor, uh, governess, that I think was your, thank, thank, I must thank you for correcting me, I misused it. Thank you for taking be, it so well. Uh, uh, I, uh, uh, be, uh, I, I, I must say that at the end of the day, the government has to take n number of decisions. And at the end of the day, we have a tenure for the government and a mandate for the government. And there are people in the government who take such decisions or take a call on such subjects. So it's for the people to decide whether, uh, uh, whether we have taken a right call or you feel that it has not been handled well. There are hundreds and millions who would believe that, and at least I believe that it has been handled very well. We were cautious. We, were, we, were, we took all the opinion on board. And when we went to the president, we had considered opinion and the reasoning to sack. Okay. The governor and here I would like to say it's absolutely you may feel that it's because you need to pitch up a point against the present government that could be true in a television interview you can have experts making comments on it but I personally feel, feel that once she was nudged out of Mizoram and when others governors were indicated she should have also the lady governor of Mizoram earlier of uh, Gujarat should have resigned so okay. more that that would have been much more dignified as it usually should have been done by any other government with the change right. of dispensation with the change of government. You may well be right and you have every right to that opinion that she should have saved herself the trouble by resigning because clearly it was apparent to most people that she would be sacked if she didn't but I want to bring in at that point Ami Ben Yagnik and I want to quote to you what Justice Ramaswamy, then a Supreme Court judge, said as far back as 1997 about Kamla Beniwal. At the time, Kamla Beniwal was a member of the Rajasthan government. And it was to do, in fact, with a, another land case in which she was involved. This is what he said. It's prima facie established that Srimati Kamla, the then Honorable Minister Urban Development and Housing Department, Government of Rajasthan, blatantly misused her official position to favor a few individuals and highly placed individuals at that and has thereby caused wrongful gain to them and wrongful loss to the Jaipur Development Authority. Now I put it to you after that stricture was passed in 97, did she not make a terrible lapse in once again getting involved with a corporate society in buying land which was clearly disputable and questionable? Should this not have been a lesson to her, and if she nonetheless disregarded the lesson and went on and did this, then does it not suggest the government has grounds to remove her, even if they've handled those grounds gracelessly and whimsically? Karanji, two issues. When the observation is made by the apex court, the word prima facie is used. When we use the, when we see a prima facie word, that does not mean that it is finally decided and it is an ex facie. So the matter has to go on until it retains finality and then it is finalized that yes, here there is a gross irregularity as it was observed prima facie. So we do not have the later result, nor do we have the later observation. That is one point. Second point, this land issue is with the registrar of cooperative societies. And when such a cooperative society is there, when somebody, a member sitting there in the member, as a member, buys the land, we have to look at all the papers. We can't just have a sweeping kind of a statement that she should not have bought the land because there's a procedure followed and there's an authority which decides on the merits and demerits of these membership as well as the procedures that are okay. followed in this particular cooperative society. You know, Ami Ben Yagnik is a very sharp lawyer. She picked on that word prima facie and she's built an extremely good case around it and I give her full credit for it. But it alerts me to something else. In 97, this lady was still a member of the Rajasthan government. She only became a governor in 2009 That's when right. she was appointed by Manmohan Singh. That's right. This stricture was still on the books. That's right. Should Manmohan Singh then have chosen her to be governor in the first place, 
when the Supreme Court had passed this stricture and it was still on the books? He ought not to have. He ought not to have. And another point which I wish to make is, you have accepted a pleasure appointment. And if you have accepted a pleasure appointment, you must face its consequences. And for withdrawing, for the president to withdraw his pleasure, a prima facie finding is more than enough because she is not entitled to an inquiry. Except that this prima facie finding goes back to 97. Can you really use it in 2014? Why not? If a previous government has made an illegitimate appointment in law, and I'm speaking strictly as a lawyer, a fa the fact that an appointment which ought not to have been made has been All made right. can is be sufficient revoked. for the paper for the file it's Mr. sufficient for the file <laughs> mr general and yes, i'm going to go back mm. to that thought that we began the second part with you may have a good case it seems to be the feeling certainly with mr ramachandran that you have a good case but you've handled it badly you've handled it gracelessly here's another example of what i call bad graceless handling on the first day, your government from Gujarat let it be known that Dr. Beniwal was being removed because she had used the state aircraft 63 times, mainly for trips to Rajasthan. And you were clearly suggesting through innuendo that this was abuse of privilege, wrongful use of the state aircraft. But you know as a former government, member of the Gujarat government, that a governor can't use a plane without the authority of the government. And she got the authority every time she used it. Now, for that government to turn around and say it was abuse is a bit rich. You should have refused permission rather than grant it and then tell her later on it's abuse. Well, there are two things, Karan. Let us understand very clearly that even the budget of the governor is never discussed by the state assembly. No kind of remarks are made on the budget passed for the government, governor. So it is passed in a belief that the government is going to, governor is going to utilize the resources with the state has entrusted to her as the guardian of the state with utmost diligence and care. Here is a case okay. where, you know, entitlement may be for an occasional case where official work, you are eligible to take the state aircraft. But three times a month, current 288 flying hours between Jaipur and Ahmedabad in four years, would mean three visits every month to and fro. Now, are you are you trying to tell me that she was required to visit Jaipur thrice a month mm. for but the official? Why didn't you object earlier? So why did you, you permit it? Why you... did you permit it and only object after she left the state and got transferred to Mizoram? This is something you were aware of. You were noting and well, adding up the number of trips. You could have objected I'll earlier. Explain. You didn't. I'll That's explain. the point. I I'll explain, Karan. Why I'll explain, you? Karan. See, even, even in the normal cases, even a topmost class one officer is being investigated or there are charges under him or her being under consideration, she is immediately shifted from the place where she is working so that she is not in a position to temper with the yeah, proofs. But that's now, not here is a question. person who is holding the highest constitutional office. Mm -hmm. So, unless you shift her to other place, there are every possibilities All right. that her very being there can temper with the proof. I, I, that's your answer. I've got Raju Ramachandran sitting here and nodding his head in what looks like disagreement. Very quickly, Mr. Ramachandran. I don't accept that view of uh, Mr. Jainara and Vyas for this reason, that you can't compare a governor to a government servant. A government servant has the protection of an inquiry. He can be suspended. There is no such concept here. And so, therefore, you inflict this governor on the Northeast. And that's a point which I wish to make. We are again treating the Northeast as a dumping ground. The well, that's another issue. Let's not get, let's not get lost and deflected on that. You may be right, but that's a different issue. But are you agreeing with my point that by raising these, this issue of 63 trips, once again, the government may have a good case, but it's handling it gracelessly? I think so. You agree? I think so. I think so. Aunty Janet, we're coming very close to the end. I'm going to look to you as a journalist for a sort of concluding answer that can sum up. Would you accept the conclusion that we've all managed to come to at the end of this one-hour show? that by and large people do believe there is a reasonably good case for the sacking of Kamla Beniwal. I know that you don't believe that quite as much as Mr. Ramachandran believes it and certainly Ambi Bedi Agni doesn't no, believe I, it at all. But, but let me finish. The case, but, but the fact Karan, that the president, I, let me finish, yeah. but the fact that the president signed without asking for reconsideration seems to suggest he believed there was a good case otherwise he would have asked for reconsideration. Do you then accept the corollary conclusion, a good case but gracelessly handled, capriciously handled, and in the handling the government has lost out. 
absolutely Karan look I don't know the facts of the case and I'm not here to plead for uh, Kamla Beriwal at all certainly if the president felt that you know if the president signed on the order sacking her he was clearly convinced that there is a good case against her and he is a constitutional scholar as Raju Ramachandran said so I, I, I can't quarrel with that decision I'm nobody to quarrel with that but what I don't like is the kind of innuendos, the kind of allegations that are being flung around. Okay. I don't think it behoves BJP spokespersons to be appearing on television every night and making allegations against this lady when we don't know what the facts of the case are. And I think first we need to know the facts of the case before we can judge whether, you know, whether it's okay. right or wrong. I, I and, and, you know, and this is where I want to also make us, you know, just register my strong objection to what Rudy said about me. Like he brings in personal comments. Here we are discussing a much right, more important I, I, issue, the sacking of a governor, and he brings in personal all right, comments. I, I, you, this you, is what I'm saying. You, badly you, handled. Absolutely all right, badly Arti, handled. All right, Arti, we've run out of time. I'm going to just make one point in defense of the two BJP spokespersons. The reason why they come to television studios to make their points is because we invite them. They don't force themselves on us, and therefore it would be unfair to say that they do something wrong. We invited them, and let me add that I'm particularly grateful that they both came. I'm also particularly grateful that Ami Ben Yagne came and made time for us despite the fact that she had many other things to do. My thanks to all my guests for joining me and my apologies Mr. Rudy for being so presumptuous as to point out the meaning of the word governess and thank you for taking it in such good spirit. Goodbye. Good night.